What's up guys, I hope that you are well. It's been a while since we have done a comment reading video on this channel, probably about a year if I were to be more precise on that number. It is a rainy day in Sydney at the moment, so I figure what better time to sit down and read some of the comments that I have loved over the last year of reading your comments. I have this folder on my computer into which I gradually put comments that I like throughout the year and it's just been building up and building up. So let's see what comments we find in there today. So the first one is from Zircon. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly on how to get the 16 personalities to come to a party with you. Yes, that's how far we're going back here. Last time I, INTJ, was at a party, it was because my flatmates at the time threw it in the house I was living in without telling me. It resulted in me barricading my bedroom door with my desk and then jumping out the window to stay in a hotel for the night. I moved out of that flat a week later. As usual, a very unrelatable comment from an INTJ. I don't think you could actually pay me to leave a party at my own house. I just love that this person was clearly happy to spend money on a hotel and happily chose to spend money on a hotel rather than literally walking out, saying hello to a few people and exiting out the front door. Next one is from Hi on 16 Personalities on a Walk. When I first watched the INFP part, I thought to myself that was way too dramatic for me. And then I remembered I was the one crying over my problems talking to a pine cone yesterday. You INFPs with your inanimate objects. I still remember when I first wrote a script where an INFP was talking to an inanimate object and I was literally like, this is a meme. I'm exaggerating an INFP stereotype for the sake of comedy. And then there were all you guys just jumping in being like, yes, I talked to a pine cone. I talked to a chair. Uh, I have a hairbrush that I'm particularly attached to. On that same train of thought from the non-painter, OMG, this made me tear up, lol. I had a relationship like this with one of the air conditioner compressors at our school. Darn, I miss her. I would always talk to her right after school and she was always so kind. Of course, she had her problems of her own, but we were always there for each other, so it's all right. And I mean, I know she's an inanimate object, but she's just so real to me. Ever since fifth grade, she was always there for me when no one else was. I'm a ninth grader now and I honestly miss her with all this pandemic stuff. La mayo. I love the, the very sincere monologue that she's got going on and then she's like, actually miss the air conditioner. Mameo, <laughs> I hope I can see her one last time before I go abroad. I hope that happens. Shout out to my school campus air conditioner compressor. She has a dear place in my heart and memories. Like, why? Like no judgment, INFPs. I assume this person is an INFP, maybe not. But like, how can you have a relationship with an inanimate object? That's the first question I'm posing to you guys to answer in the comments. What is it that even makes a relationship fulfilling to you? And how is it that an inanimate object can provide that? I feel like I could be nicer to my air conditioner, to be honest, after reading this comment. Now, these are some of my favorite comments. This was on the 16 personalities in a horror film thumbnail that I posted on my community tab and I asked you guys to guess the concept. And these are some hilarious suggestions. 16 personality types after realizing they asked an INTP for advice on relationships. 16 personalities watching Shrek, obviously. 16 types when they enter a public restroom. And I love this because I think the ISTJ has thongs. <laughs> 16 personalities entering the INFP's mind during class. You know, because we all casually enter the INFP's mind during class. The 16 personalities in a YouTube comment section. You're not wrong. Also on 16 personalities on a walk. Zircon, once again. INTJ is fairly accurate for me, except to truly capture what it's like to be an INTJ going for a walk, you'd have to film at 3 a.m. I haven't been outside in daylight hours since 2013. I so appreciate when commenters clearly bend the truth in the comments for the sake of creating a comment that's gonna get likes and create humor. On 16 personalities meeting the parents. Gooky for you says, INTP, I'm terrified I'm going to make a faux pas in this social situation. Me, is that not a valid opening line? Imagine going to a party and actually meeting someone and saying, hello, I'm terrified that I'm going to make a faux pas in this social situation. I feel like that actually might go down well depending on who your audience is. I feel like if someone said that to me, I'd be like, huh, you and me both, buddy. INTPs, let me know in the comments some of your most embarrassing social faux pas. Actually, you know what? All of you, everyone watching, just type out your most embarrassing social faux pas. Let's all bond together. On 16 personalities writing song lyrics, Violetta writes, INFJ in the video. What rhymes with crippling despair? Me, INFJ. My life. 
I know this was a joke, but... Um, are you okay, Violet? Also on 16 Personalities writing song lyrics, fleeting footnotes writes, as always, the subtitles are a great hilarious bonus. One of my pet peeves about modern music is how often the subject is I, etc. But the reason why I put this comment in the folder is because of the final line. Edit, shouldn't you of all people know the degree to which sanity is overrated? Ouch, fleeting footnotes. Ouch. But yes, absolutely. Real talk, I love how comfortable you guys have become in the comments with calling my weirdness out. On 16 Personalities doing a jigsaw puzzle. Seelan H writes, okay, but are we going to talk about how the ESTP in this sketch is just straight up evil? For context, I think the ESTP in this sketch hid one of the puzzle pieces of the communal puzzle that was being done. And then Hans Gruber jumps on and says, we prefer to view ourselves as puckish rogues. Heard it here first, guys. If you're an ESTP, feel free to introduce Introduce yourself at parties as puckish rogues. You will then make the INTP who is terrified of making a social faux pas feel a lot more at ease. On the same video, Peter Small comments, the ENFJ upon completion of the puzzle. Did anyone else experience a sense of closure? Real talk, when I finish a good jigsaw puzzle and it's like all done and there were no missing pieces, puckish rogues, I'm looking at you, there's actually closure. And you've usually done it with a bunch of people. And in fact, it's usually in the last like, 20 pieces that all your housemates come and join so that they can claim the victory of the puzzle themselves as if they were part of it the whole time, even though they didn't go through the journey with you. The completion of a puzzle is just so cathartic, you know. You've unpacked stuff together, you've chatted about world issues, you've dived deep into the meaning of life, right? Is that just me in puzzles? Ah, oh, this is making me want to do a puzzle. On 16 Personalities on their birthday, Hannah Rose comments, last time my family decided to throw me a big birthday party, I lived out the majority of it hiding in my closet. It. And the times I was required to come out, I spent subtly hinting at the people that they were unwelcome. <laughs> INTP. How do you subtly hint at people that they are unwelcome? You're like in a conversation with someone, you're like, yeah, the weather is really lovely, you're correct. Um, this house doesn't actually fit more than one person in it. So, oh, it's getting late. Oh, 7 p.m. Goodness, it's about time for me to head to bed alone in a preferably empty and silent house. Wow, that's a nice drink that you've got there. Um, you're not welcome. <laughs> yeah, my mom did make the cheesecake. Um, you should leave. On 16 Personalities meeting someone new, Arnold J comments, OMG, the INTJ and the You're My Type ad freaked me out by coming so close and reminded me I don't know who I am. For context, the INTJ comes close to the camera and says, who are you? I'm glad you guys are picking up on my subtle hints to encourage you to analyze yourself and to question your own sense of identity. You know me, I'm here to provide comedy, but to also give you existential crises. On the same video, Chelsea comments, honestly, people who enjoy charades are usually sociopaths. Excuse you, I resent that, Chelsea. I will have you know that I've had many a fun game of charades and yes, my empathy somewhat disappears when I play the game and I'm filled with a deep sense of rage and obsession with winning, but uh... Those are just personality quirks. On 16 Personalities interacting at a winery, cloned goodness comments, I have long suspected that in conversations with my ENTP friend I could be replaced by a cardboard cutout. Good to have that confirmed. Look. I feel like this could sum up all of our thoughts towards our relationships with the ENTPs in our lives. Who here feels like they could be replaced by a cardboard cutout in their conversations? I feel like ENFPs are not gonna answer yes. I feel like anyone who doesn't use NE will probably answer yes to this. No offense, ENTPs, it's obviously great that you use NE. Just keep it away from me. On 16 Personalities Packing for a Vacation, Maria Harper comments, INTP here has Mr. Bean vibes. I don't hate that. That definitely wasn't what I was going for. Just like I wasn't going for nonchalant fish from SpongeBob in my other videos, but I'm kind of vibing it. On the same video, absolutely pointless videos, comments, great skit as always, but I think your doors were installed upside down. Strangely, in both of the houses in which I filmed my videos, you guys have pointed out how high my doorknobs are. You can see that doorknob here, apparently it's high don't know why. We're rhyming today. Look, I'm not complaining. It makes for great baby proofing when there's a toddler around the house. Because that happens so often in my life. Having a toddler around. On 16 Personalities interacting at a party, Freddie Moller comments, the INTJ is so accurate that it makes me want to rebel by staying in the party for a long duration and behaving agreeably. On behalf of all of us, I think we would support this if you chose to do this. Where's the beef comments? Legend has it that the ENFJ is still staring through her narrowed eyes whispering, is it? At nothing in particular until this very day. Wouldn't put it past her, especially this ENFJ who was uh, slightly problematic. As are all the ENFJs. 
PJs in my videos. School PL comments, you've made INTP in less than 10 eye blinks. I'm impressed. I didn't notice until I read this comment that I did the eye blink multiple times when I do my INTP characters, but then I went back and looked at the videos and I was like, wow, it genuinely looks like they are under the influence of something. They're all like, yeah, okay, so I point out that they blink. Am I wrong? Do they not blink? <laughs> That's what I thought. On 16 personalities giving Christmas gifts, La Mayo ENFP was so relatable. One day I gave my friend a package of his favorite sweets. However, I forgot to buy the packaging and put everything in a regular plastic bag from the supermarket. If that's not bad enough, I also couldn't resist not eating some of that bag. Not, not eating some of that bag. To fill the void with something, I cut out a postcard and pasted pictures from the newspaper there and put some trinkets from my house. I have questions. You ate the plastic supermarket bag. Okay, look, I don't want to judge too quickly. Was it cardboard? No, nope, it was plastic. It was a plastic bag from the supermarket. I couldn't resist not eating some of that bag. I mean, look, you're only human. Who hasn't seen a supermarket plastic bag and just gone? Take my money, I am starving. That detail is glossed over so casually that I'm kind of even thinking, am I in the minority for not eating supermarket plastic bags? You had the sweets. Why didn't you just eat the sweets? On 16 personalities staying in a hotel, running from a bear comments, I once had a house party that got out of control. Someone stole the banisters, like sawed them off. The floors were a sticky mess that made a weird sound when you walked on them. We didn't manage to clear it all up before my parents got home. He STP. And then Shrimp Dance jumps on and says, I have so many questions. Chiefly, which part of it did they take or did they somehow manage to take the whole thing? Again, just casually glossing over the detail of someone stole the banisters. Imagine going to a house party in a person's house that isn't your own, seeing the banisters, being like, those are some nice banisters. I want to take them for my own. And then sawing the banisters off. It's comments like these that make me think, are the stereotypes even that extreme? Because I would only pick an ESTP party for this kind of thing to happen. As an SE Dom myself, I feel like I would never do this or let it happen because I'd be too scared of like <laughs> offending the people who own the house. Like I just wouldn't want to have to have that conversation. Like, hmm, welcome home. Sorry, I've stolen your banisters. 16 personalities, new year resolutions. Audrey Howler writes, lying about food or the amount of food at a social gathering, as well as bad beer, are my ultimate pet peeves for social gatherings. So I arrive prepared, of course. Close friends know I always stash a cooler of good beer in the back of my car when I go to parties. And will have eaten first and have plans where to eat after should the need arise. I will not be denied, ISTP. I put this comment in the folder because I just want to give this tip to everyone. You're welcome. On 16 personalities, making three wishes to a genie. Angelina P comments, as an INTJ, I would like to start a petition to eliminate small talk. Well, Angelina P, it's your lucky day because we will be starting this petition in the comments. Should we eliminate small talk as a society? Like the comment below if you vote yes. On 16 personalities on Valentine's Day, Eris Perap writes, ah, the home of the ENTJ and ENTP, where they have Jesus on the front door and booby traps in the garden. This comment is everything. A lone wolf writes, so the ISTP always feels like a cameo, just like it should be. And then Lost Cloud jumps on and writes, that's how Curtin's videos get interesting. My name is right there. James Seacrest writes, only an ISTP could deliver a self-replicating beer. Now the amount of people who commented on this glitch continuity issue in the video where I had three characters, there were different beers, the beers were being moved around in the shot and I didn't keep track. And so, you know, as someone who has to do, you know, acting and directing and costume and memorizing the lines and setting up the camera, forgive me if I didn't keep track of the continuity of the beers, guys. Wow, I made that weirdly personal. On 16 personalities, getting ready for a date. Jack Sol wrote, the fact that I'm an ENFP and she said to remember to exercise emotional boundaries when I have never said that to myself in my life has got me worried. Mommy, I'm take this opportunity to tell you that uh, you do, you do need to exercise emotional boundaries. On 16 personalities, explaining the pet peeves. Felucel writes, werewolf is my favorite party game of all time. I love subtly accusing people of being murderous beasts when I'm the one secretly killing people every night. 
What is wrong with me, ENFJ? I just left this comment to expose you ENFJs for who you really are inside. For real though, when I play werewolf, it's like this whole new side of my personality comes out. I feel like that's pretty normal. At the same time, I know a lot of FE doms who do not like these kinds of games because they don't like the disharmony that it provides in the group fair. I've had to apologize multiple times after playing Werewolf Mafia, Avalon, and games like this for literally accusing people I've never met of murder and being evil. So on 16 personalities on vacation, Wide Whale Corduroy writes, they're over there speaking gibberish is pretty much how I view all of extroverted humanity. Look, where's the lie? Natasia writes, I feel like and perish due to my lack of SE is the perfect ending to all of the what ifs to the ENFP questions. ENFPs, do you perish due to your lack of SE? Let us know in the comments. Mina writes, as an INFJ, all I can say is that it doesn't matter what I will say now. I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm an INFJ. We love when INFJs go along with the jokes that I create in my videos, namely 16 personalities as YouTube subscribers where I made the joke that all INFJs love to tell people that they're INFJs. And since then we've had multiple INFJs owning that they're an INFJ in the comments. Though are they really INFJs? Cause maybe they were typed as an INFJ based on the 16 personalities.com test, which skews towards INFJs incorrectly most of the time. I'm not gonna go on that tangent now. On 16 personalities interacting during a fire alarm, Sophia didn't write Jill's glasses. They better burn. Well, they didn't, Sophia. On 16 personalities as grown adults on an Easter egg hunt. Sin Johnson writes, I'd replace the chocolate eggs with real eggs, not rocks, but otherwise very accurate. Can't believe I didn't think of this one. This is absolute genius. Good on you, Sin. We know that this is a true ESTP through and through. They probably didn't decipher their type based on the 16personalities.com test. Max Mogavero writes, from my own experience, characters like the Easter Bunny are some of the first and largest conspiracies that a child can uncover. I'd wonder if it were ethical if I didn't also suspect that it is one of the most important lessons in critical thinking and may in fact set a child on the path to being an INTJ. Okay, I was having this conversation with someone recently. Who here actually believed in the Easter Bunny growing up? I'm gonna put this in another comment. I will pin one of the comments, not sure which one now, but let me know in the comments, did you actually believe in the Easter Bunny? Because I was chatting to a friend the other day and they were saying how it's just one of the least believable things even as a child to believe that there is a bunny going around Around, delivering decorated eggs, which means that he or his minions must have had time to paint and decorate the eggs at some point. And they've got the eggs from chickens somehow, a seemingly endless supply of chickens. And it's a giant bunny. Much harder to believe than say Santa Claus. On 16 personalities through the eyes of the ice TP, Quokka writes, is it just me or is Kristen getting like, weirder. That's not a bad thing. I loved this comment so much. When I got this, I screenshotted it and sent it to like multiple people. I was like, the truth is coming out. So then I jumped on and commented weirder or more comfortable on YouTube. And then my sister jumped on and commented, YouTube has seen nothing yet. And boy, was she right, friends. Boy, was she right. Lost Cloud writes, what ISTP stands for? I am very cool. STP. Can't really argue with your logic on that one, buddy. On 16 personalities listening to music, Alina Alex writes, one day I went to a singing class and met that weird ENFP guy. He was talking and talking and talking about nonsense stuff while I was just trying to focus on my lines, which made me deeply upset. Suddenly he came up with a bunch of deep thoughts. I violently raised my head, said, wait, can you explain more? And then BS again. I was even more upset as I will never know what he meant. INTJ. This is the most classic INTJ comment ever. And I also love the use of violently. This person's just like, yeah, yeah, listening to this person rant about their silly thoughts. And then next minute they hear deep thoughts and they're like, on things the 16 personality types would never say part three. Grazina writes, the INTJ joke is that although we totally dressed up Binky Boo in an adorable Ewok outfit and took pictures, we'd never tell you. This is funny because it makes me think that somewhere, somehow, there are all of these INTJs independently going to different photo shoots, cute like puppy cafes, like alone with like face masks on so that no one can see them and just engaging in just unbridled cutesy play with their pets. But like they're always prepared with like a hat and sunglasses or like a hood to put over their head 
in case they run into someone they know. Although if you're an INTJ, you'd probably plan it so that you didn't run into someone that you know. I just picture these INTJs like living double lives where they've made like all these friends who are into like dressing their dogs as plush toys and taking photos. And they've got like these secret group chats where they're like cooing over baby rabbits and stuff. Oh gosh, am I wrong? On 16 personalities through the eyes of the ENFJ, TJ personality breathes, ENFJ. Hmm, yes, childhood trauma. <laughs> 640 likes because everyone knows it's true. I love the idea of the ENFJ saying in the most inappropriate of contexts, hmm, childhood trauma, when someone breathes. Like there's an ENFJ doctor who's like just resuscitated a patient and the patient's like, <clears throat> and takes a breath for the first time. And the ENFJ's like, wait, no, no, hang on. We are not gonna celebrate this. Childhood trauma. Oh, <laughs> like there's an ENFJ like masseuse who's like encouraging people to relax by taking deep breaths and the client takes a deep breath and they're trying to relax. And now out and the ENFJ is like, hmm, yes, childhood trauma. And the client's like, didn't I come here to relax? And the ENFJ is like, yes, technically, but childhood trauma. Or like there's like a literal ENFJ therapist who's just spent like an entire hour unpacking their client's childhood trauma. And the client's a little worked up. So the ENFJ is like, don't worry, we'll stop thinking about it. Let's just relax, like free your mind of all the things we've just discussed. Let's just relax. I want you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And the client's like, and the ENFJ's like, oh, childhood trauma. And the client's like, I know, we just unpacked it. He told me not to think about it anymore. <laughs> and the ENFJ's like, childhood trauma. On when you date after discovering MBTI, Apple Patronum writes, it hasn't been 24 hours since I explained someone their cognitive functions. Wasn't a date, just the daughter of my mum's friend. If this isn't the most relatable comment, the amount of times I've ended up in a random party situation explaining Myers-Briggs and cognitive functions to people, you know, there's a process to it. If someone mentions it, you throw out the bait, see if they're latching, see if they're interested in the topic. Then when they ask, you to explain it more, you say, look, it's kind of complex. Do you have three hours? And then if they say, look, I'm actually really interested, you can then sort of, you know, start to talk about the cognitive functions. And then you end up in the corner of the room with the person for like an hour and a half, two hours, three. Then you run into them at a party and then they come up to you all excited. And then you don't remember their name because you never asked. Alex Berg writes, let's be honest, Kristen really just wanted to talk about Lion King 2. And if there was any mystery to my personality, it has now been a completely abolished. I've been figured out. There's nothing more to me. Sarah Foe Storms writes, dates when I start talking about psychology. Oh wow, he's using this as a clever way to move toward a romantic conversation while showing how smart he is. Dates 10 minutes later. Nope, that ain't it. I need more wine. Relatable. You know, you bring up psychology as like a coy sort of like flirtatious thing at the beginning and they're like, okay, psychology, I can get on board. And then after a while you're like, <laughs> no, but seriously, you're an ENTP and this is gonna really benefit to learn about you because your polar FI means that you're probably not gonna be super in touch with the things that are important to you personally. And then the date slowly backs away and never calls you again. Brad Williams writes, I was going to say that Red Sweater Kristen was an INTP, but she didn't bow awkwardly to her date. You heard it here first, guys, this is the tell that someone is an INTP. Any social interaction with them, they will bow. True fact. On 16 personalities getting arrested, Giraffes on Fire writes, I'm an INFP and I can honestly say I've been fantasizing about freeing lobsters since childhood. This video made me happy. And then Rebecca Corum writes, I can't believe how accurate this is. I've literally considered buying supermarket lobsters to set them free. And then LL writes, I once bought two lobsters from a restaurant in Nice, France and set them free into the sea. Yep, I'm an INFP. Again, this INFP world that I just cannot relate to in the slightest, this is the most wholesome thing that I will ever see. I'm gonna call it. It's funny, cause again, that was just a joke that I wrote as a means of exaggerating the traits of an INFP. And so to have three people relate to it, I mean, like, this is the kind of stuff that just makes me feel like I can say that I've accomplished what I wanted to on YouTube and just retire. On 16 Personalities Moving House, Dashing Clasher writes, I remember when I was 10 and we had to throw away a sofa set we had since I was a baby. To put it simply, we kept it for much longer. To put it unsimply, the INFP cried a lot until the parents agreed to keep it. Am I wrong? Very cute, you INFP, so cute attached to your inanimate objects. You're a bit cheeky, aren't you? On 16 Personalities responding to a telemarketer, Sarah MK writes, just turn your airplane mode on in the middle of a call. It's hanging up with no hard feelings. I probably shouldn't give advice though. 
a fellow ISTP. Again, left this comment in as advice to you guys. Thank you, Sarah MK. On 16 personalities interacting on a sick day, Daniel Lokonga writes, what's INTJ doing with tape and a glass cup? <sighs> Classic call out. All right, Daniel, you've caught me red handed. I needed props. Grab the first two things that I saw. Would you do differently? Question to INTJs, what would you do with tape and a glass cup? Let us know in the comments. On 16 Personalities answer questions about their dating lives. Wide Whale Corduroy writes, My ISTJ spouse hates it when I try to sing to her. I wrote a song for her once, sang it, recorded it, playing all the instruments, then mixed it and gave her an MP3 of it as an anniversary present. She said she appreciated it. Then, when I hinted that I might do that again for our next anniversary, she said, you know, I don't think I'm the sort of person who really likes music. So next anniversary, she got a waffle maker. I love this. Totally relatable. The amount of times I read my poetry to my ISTJ ex-housemate and I got nothing. Word to the wise, if you want people to understand your poetry, read it to an NF. Don't read it to an ISTJ, just trust me on that. And then I love how one has jumped on and gone, waffle maker is love. I mean, who doesn't love a waffle? Really, like who doesn't love a waffle? That's a serious question. Josh Mulvaney writes, the INTJ one is 100% accurate. I will straight up leave a date if someone films themselves for TikTok. I don't care if they have to pay. That's them paying their debt to society. Just the ruthlessness, the INTJ ruthlessness. Like, can we have a round of applause? And guys, that is it for the comments today. Thank you so much for always contributing really funny, uplifting comments to the community. It's such a positive community. I'm really glad that we've created it together. As I've said in the other two videos that I did over a year ago, I enjoy reading your comments. I have not stopped enjoying reading them. If you'd like to see more of my favorite comments, I do upload nine of my favorite comments for each video onto my Instagram page. So if you'd like to see which comments that I pick of yours for each of my videos, go ahead and follow my Instagram page, dear.kristen. That's also where I post my type trend polls where you can contribute in the type trend analyses with your answers. They help very much. I basically post a question every month where you guys give me your answers. I then analyze the answers in type pools, find trends between the types, or within the types and then I upload my findings as a podcast episode. You can also check out my podcast on which I currently have some type trend episodes. It's called Literally No Subtext. You can find all those links in the description box below this video. I also have a Patreon page guys where if you would like to sign up you get to see extra analysis of TV shows. You get to see random other videos that I choose to upload. There's something on there about my earnings that I make on YouTube, unpacking the difference that watch time makes to how much money I make as a content creator and then I've recently just uploaded one where I reveal my my honest thoughts on each of the types. So if you're interested in checking those out as well as participating in the monthly live streams where we play a type guessing game every month, it's a lot of fun. Head over to the Patreon and join up. I super appreciate any financial support that you guys are willing to give the channel. But if you're not, that's also fine. Even just subscribing and being around, commenting, all that jazz means a lot to me. So thank you guys. Thanks for contributing to the comedy with your comments. Thanks for helping to make this channel a really great space for discussion, for honesty, for trust, for truth for interesting conversations about typology. Hopefully it won't be too long before I do the next video, though I feel great that I've managed to catch up in this video. You guys are hilarious. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye.